What's happening guys? Welcome back to the Ford Type Make It Look Out channel. Today we're going to talk about how to properly perform a parasitic draw test on your Ford vehicle. Now there's a lot of misinformation out there on the web on how to perform this test a lot, especially with the newer vehicles that are out today. And then there's this newer method that has come out and been, become more popular in the past couple of years uh, where you use the multimeter to actually test across each one of the fuses get a millivolt reading, and then take these specialized charts and convert it to a milliamp reading, and that's how you're gonna find the draw in your vehicle. Today, you're gonna see that method, 90% of the time, is absolutely useless. And this is a really good example right here in this 2011 Ford Escape with a real world parasitic draw to it. It has a real problem, it's a customer's vehicle. Uh, you're gonna see that method does not work. So today, we're gonna show the new method that everybody's pushing out there, blind leading the blind, uh, and then we're also going to show the tried and true method of putting your meter in line with a negative battery cable and getting an amperage re reading that way and then pulling fuses. And then we're also going to show you a hybrid between uh, the two methods using an amp clamp and a multimeter. Let's get started. All right, the very first thing we're going to do is prepare the vehicle for testing. Now, technically, Ford wants you to go out for a 5-10 minute test drive, come back, park it, and then start your parasitic draw test. Now, while it does sound extreme, there is a good reason behind it. They want you to go out and simulate normal everyday usage of the vehicle. You know, open and close some doors, uh, wake up all the modules, use the vehicle, get things heated up and cooled down. Uh, they want you to use sensors and actuators, infotainment systems, stuff like that, and then come back and try to find the draw on the vehicle. It's the most accurate way to do it. 90% of the time, you don't need to go to that extreme. So for most of us, the very first step is gonna be, we're gonna come over to the front doors, open both front doors, and we are going to latch them. So we're gonna open them up. We're gonna get a little flat blade screwdriver like this, stick it in here, double latch it over, and this is gonna tell the controlling module that the door is closed. This is very important because we need access to the interior fuse panels for draw testing. So if we're in the middle of a draw test and the vehicle's asleep and we, we, we open the door, it's just gonna wake half the modules in the vehicle up. Defeats the whole purpose. So right now, before we put the vehicle to sleep, let's go ahead and latch the doors. Make sure it goes all the way over. There we go, double click. And that'll allow us access to the interior fuse panels and other items without waking the vehicle up. The next thing you're going to do as you're walking around is look for any weird aftermarket components like you see the reverse camera here. 90% of the time, again, your draw is going to come from aftermarket items wired up to the vehicle, usually incorrectly, or malfunctioning uh, aftermarket components that are made to the quality that the OE stuff is. Okay. The other thing is, if you have an intelligent access key, this is an IKT, it's not intelligent access, but if you have an intelligent access key, you know the keys that allow you to keep the key in your pocket here and just come up and touch the handle and opens up, that's intelligent access, the push button vehicles. Those ones, you wanna keep the key at least three feet away from the vehicle, preferably like 10 feet away because that will also send signals to the RFA module and wake up half the modules in the vehicle. All good things to keep in mind. Inside the vehicle, you wanna look around, make sure the cluster looks like it's dead. We have a flashing pats icon, good to go. We're ready to go there. Clocks off on the radio. Everything looks like it's definitely turned off in here. Look around and remove any like radar detectors or uh, phone chargers and stuff like that. Disconnect all that stuff that may cause a draw. Go ahead and check your dome lamp. Yep, it's out. Sees all the doors are closed on here. The other thing is we need access under the hood for the battery and also the battery junction box. So we need access. Well, the other thing is, is that the a lot of the newer Fords have a hood switch. It's usually across the core support here somewhere, okay? Or up the fenders here. Some, it's over here in the latch. So if there's any wires come off the latch here, you know that that is a hood switch on there. You need to bypass that hood switch so the vehicle, again, thinks the hood is closed. Same reason we 
made sure the doors were closed. So it thinks everything's locked up for the night and it goes to sleep. So once you find a connector, if you do have one, you simply disconnect it from the hood switch and then you jumper it just like that with a paper clip. And they'll just short across terminals and it'll tell the module that the hood is closed. The next thing we're going to do is a few pre-checks and then we're going to put the vehicle to sleep. At this point, with the rest of the vehicle prepared for the test, we need to come under the hood here and put the vehicle to sleep. But first, you want to perform a few pre-checks before putting the vehicle to sleep and starting the parasitic draw test. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure we have a decent multimeter on hand. It doesn't have to be a fluke meter like this right here. Just a decent multimeter is all you need. I'll link to a couple down below. You want to make sure that it has a capability to read at least 10 amps on the amperage side here. Most multimeters are set at 10 amps on there. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna test the multimeter. So we're gonna put it to the ohm scale right there, and then we're going to cross short the test leads on here and test the meter and the leads all at the same time. Just cross short them together like that, and it should read right there around 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ohms, and be steady. Should not read half an ohm, it should not read one ohm, it should read 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Perfect like that, okay? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to test the battery on the vehicle. I know your battery is probably low from all these drains, but it needs to be fully charged to perform a parasitic draw test. The reason being is once the voltage in the battery gets too low, let's say around 10 volts, especially 9.5 and below, the modules start acting erratic and they cannot function properly and they'll cause parasitic draws just from the voltage being so low because they can't function properly. So we're gonna test the voltage in the battery. Our terminals are nice and tight, they're clean. Let's go ahead and we'll take our multimeter and we'll put it to the voltage, DC voltage scale right there. So let's say V and then the dash lines on there. That's DC voltage. And we're simply gonna test the battery voltage. So positive to positive and negative to negative on there. Let's see it on there. 12.45, but 12.4 to 12.6 is technically a fully charged battery. Anything above 12 volts, you'll be good to go for a parasitic draw test. So everything here checks out. The rest of the vehicle's ready to go. Let's put the vehicle to sleep. The first parasitic draw test method we're gonna to demonstrate today is gonna to be this newer style test where you simply test the voltage drop across each one of the fuses and then you take that reading, convert it via this chart to a milliamp reading based on the fuse you have and that's gonna be the amount of amperage being drawn through that circuit on there. It's a quick method to go through each one of the fuses on there, see if there's a draw, uh, but it's grossly inaccurate in the real world, okay? I don't know why everybody is pushing this method, uh, but in the real world, draws are intermittent. Any technician worth his weight and salt is gonna tell you that's the hardest part of finding parasitic draws is that they're intermittent. This test is great for constant draws, but it's not good for the real world, but we'll give it a try. Okay, in the end, you're gonna find, we're gonna go back to the old faithful method of wiring up a multimeter in series to the negative battery cable and find the draw that way. But we'll start off with this new style method. So for this method, we're gonna keep both battery cables connected as you see here. And we're gonna simply take our key and we're gonna lock and arm the vehicle. So lock it once and lock it again, armed. So right there, we got a lot of information. First of all, we know the vehicle's locked and it's armed. Also, one horn honk indicates that the module is seeing all the doors, all the, the, the trunk, the lift gate, and the hood are closed. This allows the module to fully go to sleep. So right there, it's good to go. At this point, the sleep timer starts. So in about 60 minutes or more, we can start our parasitic draw test. Okay, at this point, the vehicle has been sitting for just over an hour. So all the vehicle's modules and accessories should be asleep and not drawing more than 50 milliamps total combined from the battery. Now, the 50 milliamp spec has been offering from years from the Ford. And the idea behind the 50 milliamp spec is that at a 50 milliamp constant parasitic draw on the battery, that the vehicle's battery would be able to last 30 days and still start the vehicle. 
So that's the idea behind that spec. Most of the vehicles that I test that are known good vehicles, 20 to 35 milliamps total combined on um, drawing the battery. So 50 milliamp max. So before we get into uh, the, the parasitic draw test using the volt test drop test method across the fuses, let me go over real quick why I think this method is terribly flawed. The first problem is we are not testing the combined parasitic draw of the vehicle on the battery, so we don't know if we're exceeding that 50 milliamp draw or not. We have no idea. We're kind of poking around in the dark here. That's a real problem. Also, Ford has come out with some communications to the technicians recently about using this test method and what to be aware of using this test method. So the first problem they have with it is that the voltage drop values cannot be measured for the following types of fuses. Obviously, the cartridge fuses, they have a clear lens on top. You cannot get to them to do the voltage drop test. You can pop that lens off, but it's very cumbersome, especially while they're in the vehicle. So the problem with that is that all these fuses that are in the vehicle now, the cartridge fuses becoming really popular. So a lot of the fuses you see them here are in there. We cannot test, we cannot test all those circuits. What are we doing here? It's like, come on. So this, this method, I hate this method. But we're going to try it. And we're going to show you why you don't want to use it. Also, they have found that field testing has indicated that voltage drop values cannot be reliably obtained on fuses with a rating above 25 amps. So that eliminates a few more circuits on here, especially in the battery junction box. The other thing to uh, note is that an open or blown fuse will, of course, uh, show full source voltage on their reading. So you got to know it once you get a reading like that, that your fuse, of course, is blown. It's a good thing to note. Here's the other problem with it. The other problem is that once you get a result from this fuse voltage drop test method and you go in there, you test it and you get a reading, you're like, okay, this thing's obviously out of spec. You should still verify it with either an amp clamp or by directly con measuring the current with a connection in series, which is the old reliable method. So we're still going to have to go back to that anyways to verify it. Here's the other bigger problem, okay? Higher than expected erratic trace voltages may be observed at battery junction box fuses. That's that sucker right there. For this reason, use of the fuse voltage drop method of determining current draw is not recommended for circuits protected by the battery junction box, either an inductive current probe amp clamp or an in-series meter connection, Old Faithful, should be used to measure current instead. That's this whole box right here. Again, what are we doing with this method? Why is it so great? It's not. But I'm going to show it to you anyways, because everybody thinks it's so great. So the first thing we're going to do, now that the vehicle's asleep, is we're going to take our multimeter and we're going to put it on the millivolt, DC millivolt reading right there. You see it? DC millivolt, okay? And then you're going to make sure your leads are in the right spot. So, of course, your black's going to be in the common, and then your red's going to be in the voltage uh, section right here for reading voltage, diodes, and an uh, resistance. So over here, we're going to use this later. So make sure it's in the right spot. We're on the right setting and let's do some testing on here. So the vehicle is asleep. Now these fuses, you're simply, let me zoom you in here. See if I can get you in here. You're simply going to go across the fuses. So there's two uh, terminals on top here. Pardon my reach. So we're going to pick a fuse, right? And again, Remember, I just told you the battery junction box is not a reliable, reliable place to test this, but we're going to show it to you because it's easy to get to here. So what you're going to do is you're simply going to poke across the two here, the two sides of it, of that same fuse. You see a little lead sticking up there, and you can see we're, we're totally zeroed out. So most modules uh, will draw 1 to 6 milliamps. At that reading, at that uh, amperage rate, which is perfectly normal, we're gonna get a zero like this. So that circuit is good to go. Let's go to the next one here. It's a little awkward going around the camera, but you see how it's zeroing out like that and holding? It's not like kind of hovering, going all around. That's how you know you have the connection. And they want you to hold it for two seconds or more. Okay, we're good to go there. Definitely no draw there. 
Same here. And that's the idea behind it. Remember, you can't get to any of these cartridge fuses and you can't really reliably test anything with a 25 amps or above. Now, once you do get a millivolt reading, you simply come back, you make sure that you're, te you're testing the right kind of fuse, mini fuse at these guys right here. And then we're going to say it's a blue one down there, um, which is what, 15 amps it shows on there. So let's say we got uh, 0.2. You go lay across, and it was a blue, so it'd be 44 milliamps right there. You can see it, and that's how you're doing it on here. So the problem with this method is that when the draw is intermittent, you're testing it. You don't see anything, so you jump to the next circuit. Meanwhile, that circuit just came alive because the intermittent draw came on, and you totally missed it. That's the problem with this method. So let's go ahead and we'll go under uh, the other side here to the interior fuse panel, and we'll show you. Now, right now I can tell you that the problem with this vehicle is the rear wiper motor right here. Uh, this is common on the, any vehicle with the rear wiper motor uh, sticking out the glass like this, so escapes, expeditions, navigators especially. Uh, whenever they get stuck up like this, either binding mechanically or due to rust, even after the vehicle's off, it's gonna continually try to park it until the battery dies. That's what's going on with this. So you just walk up, you did a visual inspection, and I already knew it was the wiper causing it. But we're gonna do this test just to show you uh, what's going on here. So next, we're gonna bring you down inside here to the interior fuse panel on the uh, smart junction box here. And the reason being is, so this, this particular problem, this is going to illustrate really well why you don't want to use that voltage drop test method. Um, for this particular problem, the rear wiper here, there's a constant right here that's always powering the electronics inside the rear wiper motor. And then there's one, there's a power that comes in under run and accessory, okay? So the one that's uh, powering it at all times is what's allowing the logic inside of here to continually try to park, park, park. And when it does that, because it's seized up, it's pulling five, six amps. That's why it kills the battery overnight. It's pretty simple. But uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start testing the fuses in this panel blindly using that voltage drop test method. And we're going to see if we can spot the rear wiper motor drawing all that amperage. Let's try it. Here we go, let's try to catch it in the act. Now I'm gonna tell you right now that fuse 19, 25 amps right here is the circuit that's supplying constant voltage back there, allowing it to try to park, park, park the whole time the vehicle's off until it dies. So we're just gonna go through on here, we're gonna test blindly using this method. We're good to go and see if we can catch it on here. Good. Good. Yeah, it's just fine. That circuit, isn't it? Must be somewhere else. Oh, we just missed it. You see what I'm saying? That method is super unreliable unless you have a constant draw. So that's here's another cool check you can do for something like this where it's pulling a lot of amps. You can kind of scan the circuit board on here and see if any of the fuses are warmer than the rest. You can see it right there, right by the square. That's our fuse. That's a relay next to it. That's warm. It's probably for the wiper motor you see right there that that's our fuse right there so that's pretty cool too all right now just to show you guys that there really is a draw on that circuit that's intermittent from it continually trying to park we are going to get a good connection here you can see we have no draw right now and then it's gonna come on try to park you'll see a huge spike we have to sit here for however long some draws can be, you know, 15, 20 minutes apart. This one luckily is like 10 seconds, I think. It's going to come on. Try to park, and then it'll cut off. It's going to be patient. There really is a draw, I'm telling you. There it goes. Yeah, 
convert that over. It's like six amps this thing's pulling. That's why it kills the battery so fast. Listen. Hear that click off on there, like a relay or a circuit breaker that popped off on there? It's another indicator, you gotta listen to the car. But yeah, there really is a drawback there. So I just wanna show that. Now let's go to the tried and true uh, second method. All right, so on to the tried and true method of wiring your multimeter in series with the negative battery cable. The way you do this is you simply disconnect your negative battery cable. So it's usually an eight millimeter on here. Pop that sucker off of there, okay. And we're gonna put it off to the side like this. And we can just isolate it like that a little bit. Like that. And then we're gonna take a jumper wire of sorts to, to make the connection from the post to that negative battery cable. So I have this uh, test lead I made up for testing front to back on the vehicle. And it has about 14 gauge leads on here, so I'll use both of them. And we'll connect both of these on here. Get good connection on the negative, okay? And this will allow amperage to be able to be carried through both these wires on here to supply all the demands on the vehicle. Uh, so none of the modules act erratically. All right, so here is the other side. And remember, both of these are just negative uh, power, or well, it's coming from the negative battery post. So we're gonna connect those over here. We're gonna now put the rag here to isolate those. And we're gonna make the connection over here. Make sure you have a really good connection on here. And you want to use both of them. Wiggle them like that a little bit. Get to a clean piece of the terminal on here. And that's your connection on there. Okay. With these connected on there, I'll zoom in so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. We have the two leads coming from the one side of the jumper onto the terminal here, just clamped onto it. And then over here on the other half of the jumper, we're connected to the battery post on there. Okay. And that'll be our jumper between the two of them on there. So we're going to isolate these for now. Okay, they're all good to go. Now we just need to find the keys. All right, so I found the keys. <laughs> so at this point, with our connection completed on the negative side, we didn't touch the positive at all. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing we did before. We're going to lock and arm the vehicle. Lock and arm, okay? Right there, the vehicle starts the sleep timer once again, 60 minutes, okay? And we're gonna show you this method. Now again, I'm just showing you the different methods so you can see the first one, obviously it's unreliable. This one's a little more cumbersome, but it's old faithful. And then the third one I'm gonna show you is the absolute best method, in my opinion, um, for the vehicles nowadays. While we're waiting for uh, the modules to go to sleep, we can set up our multimeter. Our multimeter, we're going to set up a little bit differently now. We're going to take our positive here, we're going to pull it off, and we're going to put it into the 10 amp slot on there. Connection on there, and the black core stays with the common. Now, whenever we're testing on here from now on, we're going to use the amperage range on here. And mine uh, does both uh, AC and DC, but a lot of them it's totally separate, so make sure you're in the right setting. DC, again, is the straight lines right there, not the squiggly line. So mine does both on there, so we'll just go over to it. There we go, we're ready to go. Now, when once the vehicle's modules go to sleep, we are simply going to turn it on and test the amperage through the, the multimeter. The way we do this is we're going to take one side of the leads, the positive side, get them untwisted here, jeez. We're going to take the positive and put it on the battery terminal here, okay? And then we're going to take the negative and we're going to put it on the negative over here, which is the battery terminal, negative battery terminal. Okay. 
So right now, because the modules are still going to sleep uh, and all that stuff, they're pulling a lot of amperage right now. So even though we're pulling a lot of uh, amperage through these wires right here, and we're kind of checking it off of the uh, meter, it's still showing something. Now, once the vehicle's modules go to sleep, okay, we're gonna turn the multimeter back on and we're going to simply disconnect these two leads over here at the negative battery terminal. And then all the amperage for everything in the vehicle is gonna be going from the meter right here, through the meter, and over to our negative battery terminal. And that way we can test the full amperage draw on the battery, the parasitic amperage draw on the battery while the vehicle should be asleep. So again, we're all set up now. We're good to go. We can turn our meter off for now, all the way off. Let it sit for 60 minutes, everything goes to sleep, and then we'll start the process. Okay, at this point, it's been about an hour since we connected our multimeter in series with the negative battery cable. So again, all of our modules should be asleep at this point, drawing no more than 50 milliamps on the battery. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure our multimeter is set up properly, our commons over here, and our positive lead is over in a 10 amp port over here, not milliamps, amperage port. You want to go higher before you go lower. So we're going to go ahead and put it to the amperage setting on the meter. And you want to make sure you're in DC amperage range on there. It does matter. Mine's combined AC and DC on there. So make sure you're in the DC range, the straight lines on there, not the squiggly line. So mine, I can change it right here to DC. So right there, you can see we're pulling around 0 0.045 amps, which is 45 milliamps. So that's perfectly fine right there. But remember, we're still connected with our jumper here. So all the amperage is not running through the meter just yet. So you want to go ahead and disconnect the jumper on there and get an accurate reading, okay? So right now, as we explained earlier, the, the wiper motor is on back there, just turned on. So that's why we're getting such a high reading. Let's let that time out. So at this point, all the amperage in the vehicle is going through this meter. So we're getting an accurate reading of what's actually being drawn on the battery. This is why this test is so great. We're getting an actual reading to see if there is a problem or there isn't a problem. Now, right here, it's a little bit high, but it has been quite an hour. Um, but this is still, this would take weeks to kill the battery right here. So we're not too concerned about that at all. We're concerned about that big draw from the motor back there. What's great about these most of these meters is they have a min-max function on here. So we can uh, use that, and it'll literally record the minimum it sees and the maximum it sees. So we can hit that button, put it down, and walk away. Come back later and see, well, what's our min and max on there? And we can literally press the button. Get a better view. So that's our minimum. That's our average. That's what's currently happening live, and that's the max that the meter has seen since being connected and pressing this button. And that will just continually update as it goes through. Going through, this is our current draw right now, live. And it'll spike again, and it will beep for you. It's nice because you can just walk away and come back and kind of see, is there a draw problem or not? So right now, let's say we walk back over here and we saw it. Everything looks fine. I don't know what the sky's problem is. Let's check the min max. Oh, there is a problem. So why is this method so great? Well, besides the fact that you can use the min max function, that you can get live data and see what's actually being drawn from the battery. You can see it right now, what's actually being drawn from the battery. And you can know what's past 50 milliamps where you have a problem. So once you have it all set up like this and all amperage is going through the meter, you simply need to get uh, a pair of needle nose pliers and start pulling fuses out while it's happening, okay? So you can sit here and go, well, everything's just fine right now. I'm not going to pull any fuses right now. Okay, I'm just going to wait, wait, wait. So you can see it on here, hopefully. You can see it better there. Let's bring it in a little bit closer. All right. Everything's still fine. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. Then at that point, you start pulling fuses out one at a time and leaving them off to the side in order. 
As you can see, that fuse made no effect on our amperage draw on the vehicle. So while it's happening again, let's pull another fuse right here. Oh, nothing happened. That was the motor turning off back there. Okay, let's wait for it to happen again. And then you keep going through it and you see it. Now with a constant draw, you would simply see a constant draw on there and pull one fuse at a time and leave them out. That is key. You wanna leave them out. There it goes once again. So great, let's go back over there and pull the fuse for this circuit right here. Didn't make a change. And that's how you eliminate the circuits that may be causing that draw on there. And yes, it, does, it's, it is time consuming, but it is very, very, very accurate this way. Okay, it's very accurate. And that's what's so great about it. All right, so I'm gonna go pull that fuse 19 right now. And there you go. The parasitic draw is gone at this point. Now, of course, you would have had to go through all the fuses on here to find that. But like I said, it's very accurate in the end. You can see here's a draw. Is this pulling this fuse out causing a drop back down to normal or not? And the other method of voltage testing across some, you're just kind of shot in the dark and you're skipping right past fuses that may be intermittently drawing amperage like that. So this one's cumbersome, the other one's easy but inaccurate. Let's combine the two and see what we can do here. Moving on, let's take a look at the third and final method, which is my absolute favorite. It's the least invasive, therefore it's the most accurate, and of course the fastest method out there by far. The only problem is it does require the use of an amp clamp, which can get expensive. But for technicians out there that are doing this kind of work every day, it is the best method uh, for finding these parasitic draws like this. Now this method is gonna be a hybrid combination of the first method with the voltage drop across the fuses while using the amp clamp over here to find and see if we even have a parasitic draw and more importantly, when that parasitic draw is happening. Okay, so let's walk you through it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the vehicle all set like we did before, doors open, latched. We're gonna keep our negative battery cable on, nice and tight, everything's good to go. We're gonna lock and arm the vehicle and we're gonna allow it to go to sleep. Now for demonstration purposes only, we're not going to wait for the 60 minutes for the modules to fall asleep. I think you all already know you need to wait for all the modules in the network to go to sleep 60 minutes or more. Right now, we're just trying to show you the method, this new method, which I absolutely love. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our amp clamp out. We're going to put it on the DC amper setting, right around 40 amps is good to go on there. We're going to zero it out and then I'll turn the light on for you guys so you can see the reading on there. And then you're simply going to put it around the positive battery cable on the vehicle. And you're going to check and see, do I really have a parasitic draw or not? Again, after the vehicle's modules go to sleep, you should get a parasitic draw of 50 milliamps or less. So right now, because I just, of course, put the vehicle to sleep, it's right around 650 milliamps. And then out of nowhere, we're pulling four or five amps out of nowhere. There's our parasitic draw. Now, once you see your parasitic draw above 50 milliamps, where it's, you know, five, 600 milliamps, maybe an amp or more, you know the parasitic draw in the vehicle is happening. The module or whatever it is, is acting up. That's the time to bust out the regular multimeter, okay, on the millivolt setting, just like we did in the first test, and our, make sure our leads are back over here, and we're simply going to test the, the voltage drop across each one of the fuses while this is showing the parasitic draw is actually happening, and that's how you're gonna find it. Therefore, we're not taking off the negative battery cable, but we're still getting our amperage reading that that's drawing from the battery, and we're using this method to test the fuses without pulling them and potentially waking up modules on the vehicle. So you can see that's why it's the least intrusive, therefore the most accurate, and of course the fastest. We're not pulling anything apart, we're just go, 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 all the way along. And we're gonna find it really quick that way. 
as long as the draw is happening. Right now it's happening again. So again, you would just go over here and you would test, pick a fuse, test across it while the draw is happening and see if you're getting a reading on the voltmeter. If you're not, you go to the next one. But you always have this reference over here to see, am I accurately testing each one of those fuses while there is a parasitic draw? You see what I'm saying? That's why it's the best method out there. All right, that's about it. I know the video was long. I know it was very technical, maybe hard to follow, uh, but hopefully I made it as clear as possible. I just could not stand it any longer with these articles being written and these other YouTubers out there going, that voltage drop test method by itself is the absolute best out there. I just showed you it's very, very inaccurate. And actually the third method that I showed you, it's a combination of the two, is the most accurate method out there. With that being said, on Ford vehicles, from all my experience, I'll leave you guys with a few words of wisdom of what's common to cause parasitic draws on Ford vehicles. Number one being the radio, factory radio. They can cycle the CD inside of there intermittently while the key is off. You'll see clocks stay on, displays stay on. Also DSP modules, which is a digital signal processing module that feeds into the radio. I see a lot of those stay on. Uh, vehicles that are in corrosion states like we are with the wiper motor back there the arms get seized and they try to park 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 overnight like I said expeditions navigators uh, escapes they'll all have that issue with them seizing up and trying to park and kill the battery overnight um, the Lincoln and MKZs the trunk module uh, those had issues with them causing um, draws overnight would kill the battery overnight um, clusters on the F-150s the newer F-150s uh, in the shifter, the park signal would be lost going to the cluster. So therefore, it would think someone got in the vehicle and shifted the vehicle and it would wake up the cluster. And once the cluster wakes up, because everything goes through the cluster a lot of times, it wakes up the whole network and that's on the newer F-150s. Uh, the reverse camera on the F-150s, once again, the newer F-150s, they have corrosion that connector back there where it goes to the tailgate, causes a battery draw once again. So yeah, it's usually the cheaper modules, the little add-ons like that, and the parts that get exposed to the corrosion like that and the salt uh, that are gonna cause these issues. Like I said, it's gonna be the cheaper modules, like PCMs that are made so, that they're, they're so complex and they're made so well, uh, and the software's written so well in the PCMs that I've never seen a PCM ever, ever heard of one causing a draw. It's the lower quality modules, you need to start looking at them. But this draw test is gonna help you identify what circuit, and then you can just go from there eliminating different items on the circuits. That's all for now, I'll see you guys next time.